So, take advantage of the increased intensity of love enveloping you all today. April 5, 2015 by John Smallman So, your disappointment and tiredness is understandable because you, all you light bearers and way showers, have been long engaged on a very difficult task. Before you incarnated you knew that it would be difficult, but until you were incarnated, and doing the work it was almost impossible for you to foresee, how difficult and stressful it was actually going to be. Nevertheless, you are succeeding beyond your wildest hopes. Before you incarnated you had a vision of what success would entail and what it would look like, and I can absolutely assure you that if you could see what you are achieving from the perspective that you had before you incarnated, you would be ecstatic. God's plan to awaken humanity, that you are so nobly assisting with, is moving forward most wonderfully. For Ian's humanity has been lost, wandering, often seemingly quite aimlessly, and almost constantly at war with itself. But during the last few decades, the last ten in fact, enormous changes have occurred and more and more of you have started to awaken. The signs of that awakening are the vast increase in the strength of desire and intent at all levels of society to move away from the state of almost constant war that brings with it so much pain and suffering, and to heal and dissolve the fear and hatred that feeds it. That intense desire to bring an end to all wars is quite palpable, and it is strengthening daily. Humanity knows at the level of the collective, as well as in each individual heart, that your attitudes of judgment and condemnation of one another and the behaviors that flow from them must change if the planet is to maintain an environment that will support life forms that rely on oxygen. Already, as you well know, much damage has been done that seems irreparable, and further damage is added daily by your unnatural and unsustainable mining activities and by the industrial styles of farming that have become so widely prevalent, in fact almost all pervasive. The good news is that many of you, who are in positions to make a real difference, have had enough and are successfully demanding, on behalf of humanity, the planet and all the other life forms that she supports, that these unconscionable activities be brought to a halt. These demands are being heard and acted upon. You live in a time of great change, change that is essential for life to continue on Earth, and this change is being seen in all areas of human activity because all of your activities require a large number of creative solutions to start reducing the planetary damage they are causing, and then to start reversing the vast damage that has already occurred. You will not fail in these endeavors. You are achieving what you incarnated to do, namely assist humanity in its awakening process. That process was planned eons ago and is now coming to fruition as more and more humans involve themselves in it, some very consciously, others rather less so. The point is that humanity has chosen to awaken, and that collective choice cannot be reversed, you will awaken. It is your will and God's, and because you are one it will be achieved. Your ongoing task is to keep adding impetus to the ongoing process. You are a little like extremely well-trained sheep dogs gathering your flocks together and bringing them home. You gather them by holding your light on high for all to see, and by constantly holding the intent to be loving towards them in every moment of your human lives. As divine spiritual beings, you are love in action in every moment. As humans it is essential that you keep renewing that intent, otherwise it can be overlooked or forgotten. Today, Easter Sunday, when you celebrate the anniversary of Jesus' resurrection, is an excellent occasion to renew that intent with great vigor because the love flow from the divine realms is heightened in honor of this wonderful celebration. Take advantage of the increased intensity of love enveloping you all today, focus on feeling it, sensing it, and embracing it, and know that it is ineradicable, unquenchable, and all-empowering. It is you. Love cannot be overpowered or defeated because it is the infinite field in which all that exists, has existed, or will ever exist is held firmly and safely forever. There is nothing outside it because there is no outside. Those who would suggest that there is a place called hell to which the unloved and unloving, the sinners and the betrayers, the murderers and the torturers are dispatched on physical human death, are just suffering from a lack of awareness of the intensity of God's love for them, and for all those whom they would judge. All were created by God, in infinite love, and that state, the state in which they were created never changes. God and love are synonymous and unchanging. You can rely absolutely on God's love for you, 
regardless of any crimes you believe you have committed. God's love for his creations is forever unchanging, and everyone who has ever walked on earth is one of his creations. There are absolutely no exceptions. All that anyone needs to do, to know God, is to let go of all the images that may have occurred or been presented to them and clear an empty space within themselves, into which love will pour abundantly and endlessly, providing instant and everlasting ecstasy in the joy of His Almighty Presence. Take time out daily to make that space available and love will fill it because it is the divine will that you want for nothing. And today, as you remember and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, you will feel the power of the infinite love that God has for you, and you will know that you are never alone, separate, or abandoned because without you, without even a single one of you, God is himself incomplete, and that dear ones, is an impossibility of infinite proportions. With so very much love, Saul.